Welcome back. This is Richard from BlenderGrid.com. And in this video, we're going to continue with talking about render optimization in Blender. Today, I want to talk about path guiding, which is another setting. We're pretty much walking through all the render settings and talking about how we can make them, uh, how we can tune them to optimize for rendering. And when I talk about optimizing uh, a render, I mean getting a good quality render for less time and or less money. That's all I mean when I say render optimization. So when we're trying to do render optimization, it helps um, setting these settings right. And today I want to talk about path guiding, which is um, as of today, uh, where Blender 4.1 is the latest version, path guiding is turned off by default. And that makes it a uh, probably worth talking about because it's a very useful setting, but I think most people don't use it because it's turned off by default. Where the previous video we talked about noise threshold and that is now turned on by default because it just makes sense in 99% of the scenes uh, to turn that on. Path guiding is a little bit different um, where path guiding mostly like there, there are scenes where path guiding doesn't help. Um, and there are scenes where it does help a lot. So this, the, the category or the description of scenes where path guiding helps, I would say is scenes where it's hard to find the light source for cycles. And uh, a category of scenes where this is the case is interior scenes. That's what we see here. That's why I choose this interior scene um, to do some example renders. And uh, I got this scene from the Blender demo files uh, over at uh, blender.org. Under the Cycles demo files, the, the last one is called Italian Flat by Flavio Della Tomasa. Um, and this is a great example. There's uh, the classroom or the barbershop would probably also work well for this. But um, I chose this one and I did some tests and it, path guiding works great in this scene. So we don't need to know exactly how path guiding works, but it does help if you know a little bit more what it does rather than just turning it on and hoping for the best. Because when you know a little bit about what it does, it helps you uh, determine whether or not it is going to help in your case. So when we do uh, ray tracing, when we do rendering, Cycles is going to calculate a path uh, of light bounces or light rays. And the amount of samples, so every when you render, you want to know the color of every pixel at the, the most basic level. And then every pixel to, to calculate the color or the pixel value, we're going to take samples for every pixel. In this case, we're going to take 384 samples. And what is a sample? It's pretty much we're starting from the camera and we shoot out a ray through that pixel into the scene. And this is pretty much the opposite direction of how light would normally go. But this is a more optimal way to calculate um, the light path uh, and that's where path that's the path in path guiding it's just the light path so we shoot out a ray from the camera through a pixel into the scene and let's say we're hitting this chair which is for the sake of this example it's a diffuse material when we hit a surface that has a diffuse material we bounce off of that material into a random direction and the direction for a pure diffuse material is pretty much um, if you if you take the normal of the of the um, surface, it's pretty much a half of a sphere around that normal in which the next bounce can happen. So the direction of the next bounce is pretty much a random direction uh, across half of a sphere. So very very random, and then we may hit another object. And from there, we might hit another object until we hit a light source. And then we take the value of that light source, the brightness, and we calculate back to that first 
bounds um, and we multiply how much energy this this does this material take away from the light and then the uh, the next bounce how much energy take does it take away until we get back to the camera and we say okay this single sample that we took for this pixel is contributing this much light energy to the final pixel and then we do that we do that 384 times and then we have a single pixel uh, so that there's a lot of work uh, going on there behind the scenes but this naive way of taking a pure random direction from say a diffuse material is in some cases when there's a lot of light going on in the scene when there's let's say it's a fully open scene and the world contributes to um to the light a lot so the, the world is the the background of the world is very bright then it's easy then it doesn't matter that we take a random sample but when we are in an interior and the majority of the light is coming through a single window then it's a lot harder to find that window and if we just take naively random directions to guide our path or to determine our path we might never hit that window and most of the samples that we take result in light paths that contribute nothing to the final color of the pixel which means we're throwing away a lot of samples and that's wasteful and that's not optimal so this problem can be solved with path guiding because with path guiding we we kind of learn where the most bright light sources of the scene are and we guide instead of purely randomly taking a direction we kind of take a direction that guides us or that increases the chance that we eventually hit a bright light source um, and there's a lot of math going on we don't we don't need to go into the details of that but that's pretty much what path guiding can do and there is a little bit of overhead so turning on path guiding and doing nothing else will result in a longer render time but the samples that you take with path guiding can be a lot more efficient and in this scene path guiding helps get a cleaner image in less time so let's look at some renders so when we render this um without path guiding i used 384 samples for this it took my laptop seven minutes to get this result and it's pretty noisy and i i kind of did that on purpose to uh compare the levels of noise more easily so 384 samples is not enough uh, and i also turned off denoising so we can actually compare the the real noise that we're getting um so that's that's kind of the base level so now i just turned on path guiding with the default settings and what we got is a lot cleaner result but the render time went from seven minutes to nine minutes so we spent more time but we got a significantly cleaner render uh, so we can here see number one number two in the recording it might not be visible so let's zoom in four times and compare the base level very noisy to the second one which is pretty clean compared to the to the first one and then i the third render i did was with path guiding turned on but i reduced the samples to get down to about seven minute render time which is this and this is seven minutes 14 seconds so slightly longer but compared to the base level which is seven minutes flat, it's a significant improvement. So this is seven minutes with path guiding, and this is seven minutes without path guiding. And you can see this diffuse material on the wall here gets a lot cleaner with path guiding. So there you go. That's, uh, that's how it works. And uh, yeah, this... Most of the, the, majority, the majority of the light comes through this window. There are a bunch of light sources like these uh, here to just have some, this is, this is kind of cheating, but it's, they're not very bright. So this is just to uh, create some nice lighting on this, uh, this kind of 
cushion thing. Um, and if these were like you see you see the light here, if these were really bright, then um, the effect of path guiding will be less. But in this scene, it's still significant. So in this interior, path guiding adds a lot of value. And um, then within path guiding, you have three settings, and it's very simple. We have training samples and then surface and volume. Path guiding can be applied to surfaces, which I just explained with hitting, uh, taking a light path and hitting like a diffuse material that's like a surface. But it also works for volumes. So if you're rendering volumes, you might know that it requires a lot of samples to get noise free. If you're rendering volumes in cycles, um, path guiding can also help when you're rendering volumes. So here you can just choose whether you want to use path guiding only for surfaces or only for volumes. Um, if you turn off both, I guess it's the same as turning it off completely. So it doesn't really do anything in this case, but uh, I would just recommend to leave it turned on for both. Um, yeah. And then the training samples, that's the most important one. Um, so here we have uh, total samples. In order to guide the paths in a good direction, the path guiding feature needs to learn about where the, the bright light sources are in the scene. And this learning is, is very cool. This learning happens while you're rendering. So you don't have to worry about pre-training anything or anything. You just turn this on and you render and it works. Um, but you can tweak how this learning happens. So I just lost my mouse. Oh, there we go. Um, so the training samples is a setting where in this case, we have 384 samples and the first 128 samples, it will be training, which means those first 128 samples are a bit slower. That's why it went from seven minutes to nine minutes. So taking those first 128 samples, it's both rendering and learning where the bright light sources are. After we hit 128 samples, it keeps going uh, until the full amount of samples and it will just use the information it has learned to guide the paths into a better direction. And what Blender says about this is, um, here we have the Blender documentation about path guiding, which is pretty short, but what Blender says about it is usually 128 to 256 training samples is enough for accurate path guiding. Um, so anything beyond 256 is probably a uh, law of diminishing returns. You, you don't get much extra benefit from that, but it does slow down your rendering. So um, yeah, and anything lower than 128 is probably not really enough to fully learn about where the bright light sources of the scene are. So Blender recommends something between 128 and 256. Other than that, I just, I would just recommend, let's just try two or three different settings and see what it does to your render time, see what it does to your noise level. Um, but in this case, 128, so like the reason I chose the, the lower of the two is that I'm only rendering with 384 samples. If I would set this to 256, more than half of the samples are being used to train, which sounds a bit high. If I would render this with say 2000 samples, then I could easily set this to like 200 because then it's only using 10% of my total samples for training. So that's kind of my uh, thought behind it. Um, and beyond that, what Blender says about path guiding is, uh, I think this 4.1 documentation is slightly outdated because here it says it's only available when rendering on a CPU. In my experience, um, I'm rendering on a GPU right now, and this is, a, this is an M2 Mac. So the GPU is not a typical uh, NVIDIA GPU, but it's just like an internal, uh, it's, it's part of the processor in this case. But I'm able to render on the GPU and use it. So I think um, this, this documentation might be outdated, and now path guiding is also available on the GPU. Um, Something else, if you're rendering uh, caustics, 
pad guarding can help, but only if it's simple caustic. So if if the light goes through a single surface that refracts the light and then hits like a diffuse material. So this is uh, an example of when you render a swimming pool and you're, you're filming under the water, then it might help uh, to get nicer looking caustics and less noise. However, if you're doing caustics that require multiple bounces, multiple refractions, then it doesn't really help because it doesn't really, um, it doesn't really, it, it's not a caustics solver. That's what I uh, understand of this. Um, but again, if you're unsure whether you're seeing benefits from this or not, just try it. Just turn it on, see what it does to your render time, see what it does to the noise. And you can then, if it's significantly less noise, but more render time, then just lower your, your max samples and see if when you get the same render time, if you get less noise by using pad guiding. In this, in this case, in this interior scene, it does help a lot to reduce noise. Uh, and I believe in most interior scenes where uh, most of the light is coming through windows, it will help you a lot. So I hope that helps. And um, I'm going to keep going with these uh, videos. If you have any questions about this or any comments, you can leave them below. If you have any suggestions for other topics uh, regarding render optimization, please let me know. I'm looking for more ideas. Other than that, I'm just going to go through the render settings and see if I can find any anything that is worth doing a, a screencast about. So that's it. Hope you have a great day and see you in the next one.